Greetings everyone. Welcome back for third event of Jamburi. My name is Chandrika Mehra and I'm studying communication design at Indian Institute of Art and Design. And I am Dia Goyal, studying communication design at IIED. And we are excited to be your hosts for today's session. So before we begin with today's session, just to inform the audience that this, this session will be recorded. Keep your mic switched off during the session. It will be encouraging for us to see some faces on the screen and please feel free to send in your reactions through chats. Talking about Jambori, the word Jambori is popularly believed within the scouting movement that the word was coined by Baden Powell with the first Jambori held in 1922. When it was asked why he chose to call it Jambori, he replied, what ends would you call it? So what ends would be called this cross-cultural confluence of creative and creative minds? Jambori has been envisaged as a conversation starter, a platform for design mentors and students to celebrate creative pursuit, discuss emerging trends, new ideas, and topics of relevance. And after an inspirational talk on material animation by Shaz Ahmed last week, we are back with another thought-provoking talk, and there's an open space for us students to be a part of this conversation. The talk by design mentor and expert is just the start of the conversation. Let it serve an inspiration, a nudge, and a trigger to start the wheel of thoughts into motion. And we would love to hear your thoughts and views as Jamburi is by the students and for the students. I would request Damien Chapman, Head of Design School at KSA, to introduce our speaker for the day. Thank you enormously, uh, and it's a great privilege uh, today to introduce um, a colleague and a friend. Um, and I think one of the things I wanted to start off with is you were talking about Jamboree and conversations. And quite often we connect conversations as things that happen between people. But actually conversations happen between people and their environments. They happen between materials that we use. So we have conversations with our materials. We have conversations actually with the technologies that we use. It's not just a one way process, it's quite cyclical. And we have conversations about our environment and with our environment. So that's quite an empowering shift in ideas that conversations construct potentially the world we live in. They certainly construct our organisations the people in our organisations through those conversations between the materials, the technologies they use and the environments enable and construct an ongoing, growing institution and series of organisations around us. Which brings me to the wonderful work of Jake Abrams. Uh, Jake is an associate professor in Kingston School of Art, um, is a very important member of our community, uh, is an exciting artist, designer, and one of the things that I find fascinating about Jake's approach is that he's very experimental. He doesn't have a set formula. He's excited to look and explore, to look across that landscape or the townscape that he's walking through, whether it's passing through or whether it's studying as he moves and works. Um, I've known Jake for four or five years now, and I'm always excited to spend time with Jake because he's such an energetic creative. He will show me books where he's prepared spaces where he's gonna draw. So he just doesn't always go to an empty page or an empty space where he's making something, be it on a flat paper or be it a sculptural piece. He might often prepare his works and he might talk about that today. So Jake is one of those people that both inspires, but is very much a maker challenging his world, the world that's being constructed as he moves forwards. So with an enormous welcome to this very creative person, Dr. Jake Abrams. Um, what a welcome. Thank you so much. That's very, very kind. And I, I'm really excited to be part of this today. And this thing, um, our relationship uh, between our two institutions, we're, we're sister institutions. And I think, 
our students, um, yeah, we, we actually should be thinking in an international mode. Um, I think it becomes much more exciting, our, our disciplines, if you do, don't just think within the confines of where you are. And so um, Damien, myself, my colleagues, um, I, I know are really interested in, in these amalgams, these um, shared visions, but also, yeah, just yeah, getting out there, being international with our ideas. So what I'm going to rattle on about today is this really difficult thing, um, how we conjure ideas. It's really, really important for us designers and artists, and I'm going to have a little stab at it today. But perhaps just before I do that, I'm just going to talk about yeah, my, me as, a, as an artist, as a designer, as an illustrator. I, I cut my teeth on drawing for newspapers and magazines in the UK. Um, I, I, um, mostly that. I, I've worked in children's books and all, all sorts of other realms, but m mostly the, the Times and the Independent and the Guardian, which are big newspapers in the UK, doing sort of political stuff. Um, and that involves ideas, but it, um, it, it involves drawing and pushing ideas um and i thought I'd, I'd just talk about how some of that comes about so yeah yeah drawing editorially um is has to be quick you have to hand your ideas quickly you have to draw down things and develop things um this was a, a series of pieces that I did for um, the climate conference um, and, and it was sponsored by uh, the, the UN um, and just uh, just ideas about um, the environment and ourselves and how we affect the environment. I've done a lot of political stuff in my career and um, it, it's uh, it's lovely to be involved in that in that. Um, and creating images. This was uh, uh, about uh, the death of George Floyd in America. You had to come up with things really quickly. And then just, um, yeah, to, uh, it bringing humour to um, uh, uh, ideas. Um, at the same time, and I think this is important for all of us, is to be creating your own uh, um, work. And um, yeah, I, I encourage my students to have their own um, drawing books. I'll talk about that in a second, but also um, their own idea books and developing and playing experimental modes of practice. Um, recently, I've been doing some really interesting things with some of the um, preeminent um, children's hospitals in the UK. And um, th th this was an idea to um, try and take a simple idea, actually, to help kids who are sick as kids, um, to help them with procedural anxiety. And uh, yeah, th this passport I created um, uh, uh, with an alumni student um, ha has had really fantastic ramifications across the health sector sector in the UK and actually it's, it's going out to all sorts of um, uh, health environments. Yeah, so yeah, I've done this whole series of um, children's books um, that kids are invited to um, interact with them but also learn about the procedures that are happening, uh, learn about their new heart, their new kidney, um, their cancer, and how to uh, cope with it and, uh, uh, yeah, get better through graphic communication. Um, you showed this image Jake, before. Jake, but, I'm just going oh, to sorry. interrupt you for... I'm sorry to interrupt you, but for several of, of us, the screen is blank for some time. So I was wondering if uh, if it's possible for you to reshare or something, or maybe switch uh, off, switch off. Can you see me now? Sorry about mm. this, everyone. No, and I was checking. No. Oh, the wonders of the oh. internet. Um, uh, let, let me turn my camera off. Let me turn my camera on. Let me... 
I think um, I think Prachi, it must be yes. connected with the issue, but we are able to see yeah. everything. Yeah, okay, we can but, see you. Okay, now. Yeah, now it's and we can see the black box yeah. on the right hand side. Yeah. All right. Okay. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Sorry about that, everyone. Oh, you've missed brilliant no images. You missed it all. You won't be able to see it now. The art. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Too late. Um, and yeah, I suppose what I was, uh, uh, do let me know if it disappears again. And um, going throughout the world, and this is a girl in Australia with one of my books, and she's just about to have her new yeah. heart. Um, and um, yeah, you know, just a simple intervention can have a really serious ramification on um, a, a, a child's psychological well-being. Um, yeah, so done a whole series of these. And for the first time, because I've done all political work for newspapers and magazines, but actually, I think I'm doing something quite worthwhile with my art. Um, so, yeah, you can see inside here. Um, so the kid uh, colours in and writes in and laughs hopefully and but learns as they um as, as they're taken through um and hopefully alleviating procedural anxiety um the other thing i'm going to preach and i know i've got long to preach i apologize but um is this is something that i really encourage with my students is to have a sketchbook with you all the time and to just be looking at the world around you um, and uh, recording things that you see, because I think that, that has a real power. And I think in its way, drawing in its observational way can really start you thinking and starting ideas through that. Um, this was a, um, yeah, a, I was an artist in residence at a, a, a national orchestra in the UK. And um, yeah, th that was a, a fantastic experience um, based on my dra drawings. But this is the stuff that I'll get to eventually. This is my shed that I'm covering with keys. And I'll talk, if we've got time, about that and what I think it means. One, I think hopefully it's going to be very, very beautiful. But um, yeah, I'm trying to also express ideas through this. And I'm going to talk um, in a moment about this series of chairs that I've created. And each one has is meant to talk about aspects of masculinity. I'm going to talk about some of the artists that are in this realm. Um, so this is an artist called Chema uh, Mados, and um, he's a photographer, but actually through objects, he thinks ideas can be made. And he talks about something called poetic objects. And it's a very simple image, this, but I think it talks about um, creativity it talks about um it, yeah sort of freedom of uh, expression um just simple um yeah combinations that i think become very very powerful they're very uh, communicative it's just a, a glass eye and some sweet paper there but it talks about vision um Here's this campfire of uh, pencils that Chema Mados is using. And yeah, it, you know, it becomes this, this a powerful thing, creativity. And he works closely with another Catalan uh, uh, designer and artist called Joan Brossa. And Joan Brossa is one of those that I think, wow, well, every time you know, he, he puts an image together, I think there are fantastic questions. Are they bits of art? Are they bits of sculpture, photography? I'm not so sure. I, I'm not sure. Here's one of his images, and this is part of a project I'm going to show you that we do with our students. And um, yeah, we, we, uh, but at the beginning of the project, we, we, we'll show them images. This is an image by Joan Brossa, and we get them to analyze it. Well, what's there? Um, we, there it is. I'd be asking them and I'd, I'd get them to describe what's there. Well, it's a pipe system. A, and then it's a futile pipe system. It, it, it's, um, it, it's a futile chair. The chair is going to, you, you're not going to be get anywhere by sitting on it. 
where is that chair? It's, it feels like it's in a garage or something. There's a nail on the floor down there. What the hell is that about? Um, but this futile chair, this very simple combination with this tap, I think starts to talk about people. And I think maybe it's about masculinity. Uh, it's, it's about the traditional male plumber. Um, and I think then we move on to thinking about male roles. Here's another artist, uh, Seo Sismic. Um, and all he's got here, two images together. He's got a nail and a hammer. And I think, again, we're talking maybe in a, uh, about masculinity and self-destruction and, yeah, this hammer is, is futile and it's destroying itself in a very stark and simple way. If, if we understand that, here's another of his images. We've got this gross, inflated hammer, a gross, inflated, in my mind, masculinity. And I think it's just a, an odd and uh, uh, image, but I think we bring to it lots of connotations. This is this flaccid, again, I think it's uh, a ma masculine, but it's about male power. And um, yeah, th this power is inept now. These artists, um, yeah, just really, again, really simple combinations. And um, yeah, we have the sweetness, the innocence of a baby's pram. And I think what it's saying is our prejudices, society's prejudices start from the outset. Um, and um, yeah, you know, that horrible prejudicial word there, but um, yeah, is there in this, and it's delivered in such a sweet and innocent way that it, I think it has power. Um, this is Melanie Bonaggio, and she uses um, in a whole series of she she binds these naked characters to uh, a women um, to household objects, and it's photographed in this very matter of fact, everyday sort of way. But this you know this woman is tied up with literally tied up with um, the domestic um, around her, the nakedness, those socks, I think just makes her vulnerable. She's anonymized because her hair covers her face. And so the idea is universalized. To the Kingston people pr present, this is a sculpture in Kingston by a, an artist called David Mack. And um, yeah, you can see, uh, yeah, it's, it's a lovely thing. And we walk past it every day. We don't even notice it. But then I get my students to say, what do you think David Mack is on about here? And gradually they'll say, well, there's a telephone box. There's a British telephone box. Um, they start to say, well, people don't have telephone boxes anymore. So it's an out of dated technology. Um, there's a sort of like a, 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 um, a dominoes falling over. Is this something about Britishness? Is this something about outdated technology? Is the, there's danger here as it all is falling over? Um, so it's something very historic, British, technological. Truth is, I don't know what, uh, quite often, I, I don't know what the artist's actual intention is, but it's how we decipher images and see what they could communicate. Um, here, wow, look at this stark image. Um, uh, this, uh, this image is, um, yeah, all we can see here is a, an iron and an ironing board, but it, these two elements have been brought together very purposefully by this artist. 
And yeah, we see a a burqa, we see uh, we see uh, a gender, we see a, uh, a, a a racial stereotyping. Do we? There's a red hot, red hot, burning issue here. Who's in charge of this image? She's looking out at us. Are we staring in? Um, who has the power there? Um, I, it, um, what? How do we translate it? Um, and I think, um, yeah, it's it's really interesting to um, to, to do that. This is the artist um, Shadi Gadirian. Uh, the great friend of our our courses here at Kingston, uh, Daniel Etock, and his combinations of uh, the playful, is silly, um, they're very graphic, um, and he's worth looking up as well. This is Annette Messager. What do you take from this image? Well, we have, I think it's, it's a, like a wedding dress, but it's a heavy and concrete made wedding dress with the vows cut into the side. Um, when you are in this dress, there is no mistake um, that, that, that um, I can't get out of this relationship. It becomes a prison. Um, and so Annette Messenger here is um, creating an image See, yeah, it's safe and beautiful, this wedding dress, but actually it's a prison. Other artists you might be uh, well aware of, people like Sarah Lucas, um, and she uh, brings this, uh, yeah, wry sense of humour. Um, here's a dirty mattress. Here is uh, a cucumber, an orange's phallus. Here, uh, here is this uh, melons and a bucket. And it becomes this sort of, yeah, it's, it's about sex and sexuality. It's about gender in this very um, uh, cheeky but pointed way starts talking about uh, sexuality in this, yeah, very simple um, juxtapositions. And that's what I'm interested in here. Um, and there are lots of, um, in my realm, in, graf in the graphic arts, artists that are doing this in very powerful ways. So here's uh, an artist called Noma Barr, and um, yeah, just a really, this chicken and egg thing where uh, he, he's brought this together as a question mark. What a lovely poster, what a powerful image that is. There's the balloon, there's the string, but the string is a pin. It's going to pop that balloon. I think that's clever again, isn't it? It's, um, yeah, so it's a, a capsule, a, 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 a drug, and we've bro broken open that uh, 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 tablet and there's the heart. Is that about love? Is it about addiction? Um, is it... Uh, uh, I think there's another one in there too. There's a pair of lips. And I think that's really, really powerful too. Let's try this one. Um, this, this is a, 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 a um, I just think really clever. What, what I think we get from it is we get an iceberg at the top. And then underneath the iceberg is just a bit of plastic waste in, in, the, in the sea. And we talk about, then our brain's got to go to, Melting ice caps, plastic waste, pollution. Um, the, the tip of the iceberg is another um, interpolation for this. Um, just one bag, well, who cares? But actually, all of it united can have a serious env environmental uh, effect. 
So we started with this image and yeah, at, at Kingston, we, we're very famous for it, for, for our BA courses and our MA courses. Um, the, at, at their heart, we love to, um, yeah, uh, to bring ideas together. And one project I'm just going to show you that I do with my students um, is, is th this poetic objects thing where we ask them in a really quick project to do several things bring objects together to have a much more powerful uh, resonance. Um, it's usually a day or two days, and they have to um, not on only bring real objects together, but they have to um, yeah, communicate something bigger than the objects themselves. They have to photograph it and present it at the end of the day or the two days. Um, and um, yeah, I just thought I'd show you some of their imagery. Again, we're back to the power of creativity here, aren't we? Um, so they're putting these objects together. Here's the shoes. Here's the, you know, uh, the, those things you've got in your, your ears all the time. And we're going to trip up. And, um, you know, I think it's clever, that a rush, car rushing by. This is all done just really near the university here in Kingston. Oh God, what, what on earth is that about? Um, I like the image, I wonder what it means. I wonder if we could decipher it. There's a dog, there's a bull, there's a dog's lead, and there's a chicken in its plastic uh, covering. And I think the audience of this starts to, th starts to think, start, yeah, is this about animal rights? Is this about um, yeah how we, we treat one creature in a very very different way to another? Maybe, and so it's it starts to impart all sorts of other stuff. Wow, this is a contentious one. We have a sausage. We have three sausages here on a white background, and. A crucifix. It becomes a crucifix. I think it's a funny image, but I wonder what it means. Um, I wish I had longer because it'd be great to push these out to the audience, but I'm just taking you through it. But I think it's, yeah, about consumption of mass religion, is it? I, I don't know. It's, um, is it trivializing religios religions, religiosity? Maybe. This, um, yeah, the students just went, found a big, fast black, I think it's a Jaguar, um, and they put this stabilizer next to it. Um, simple mix. But what does that do to this car? Um, the driver, our imagined driver, is that a him again? I don't know, because um, the bigness of this uh, car. Um, and it, does it um, infantilize uh, the, the driver and their shiny big car? Um, does it, um, is it talking about naivety? I think this one does talk about naivety too. This is a child's plaster on the, uh, a bit of concrete near the university here in Kingston. And they just put a plaster on a crack, a children's plaster on a crack. What? What is that about? It's a big crack that that plaster is not helping with. Is it about a family, a family broken? Is it, um, is it, um, yeah, you know, is it about a kid's psychology? And this ain't going to help. And so a bigger issue comes from something absolutely quite trivial. There's another one um, that's a, a pacifier for a child and two hands. Um, this is like a wedding ring, isn't it? Um, I have given you that wedding ring. 
nothing there, just just an object and two hands. And those two hands then start to talk about infantilizing marriage or she or he's infantilized by this. Um, it's uh, or she's pregnant. They, they, you know, they're getting married because there's a baby. Or uh, who knows? But can you see that we're bringing new ideas to almost nothing? And I think with the power as well. Here I am, and I've only got a few few minutes to talk about this. But um, yeah, I've I've been working at this place for a little while, and that has really valued ideas. We can all. You can sit in front of a computer and be a fantastic uh, animator or an interior designer or fashion designer, but without ideas, um, we're nothing. And we really have to push your ideas within the arts, I think, um, and play with ideas and discuss ideas. And one of the pieces of research I was doing, I was looking at masculinity and what that could represent and how it could be represented. And I did a lot of theoretical stuff, which I'm not going to bore you with today. But um, yeah, and then I created a whole series of um, chairs um, over a, a long period of time. And my studio is packed with these damn things now. But um, yeah, these chairs are uh, meant to represent um, stories and ideas about their owners and about masculinity. I have chairs here and this body shape at the top and then wire poking through silver and copper wire. And so this um, old rejected chair that I found in a skip has become a life, a male life. Um, and just these simple movements together of objects um, that counterbalance and tell other stories. And I went a bit potty about this, and I think um, I think sometimes we, um, we catalogue ourselves. Um, I am a fashion designer. I am a product designer. I am a graphic designer. But I think actually it's sometimes more exciting to be able to walk across those realms and walk into them. And someone like Joan Brosser that I mentioned earlier really does. So I made a whole series of uh, sketchbooks that really interrogated relationships and people and their coming together. Um, and I made this whole series of paintings in my studio and uh, uh, maquettes and um, a whole series of um, yeah, so I'd do a drawing, a little drawing like that, and then might draw it up a bit better when I was starting to get interested. This was a ruler, a measuring up of masculinity idea that was in my head. I'd then make a moquette, a maquette, sorry, um, out of just bits of card and try things out and see if structurally they'd work, whether you'd get the sort of idea, the phallic idea. Um, I would start making little um, tryouts, really. Um, good way to work. Very, I suppose I preach that to my students. Make little moquettes, try uh, drawing, try, try them in different sorts of ways. So, yeah, so yeah. So this became quite obsessive, this bit of research about masculinity, about construction, constructing and deconstructing masculinity. Um, and so, yeah, um, yeah, so I and then um, making these models, I made a whole series of chairs, tiny chairs. These are but made them out of rulers that I cut up and uh, built um, and measuring up uh, masculinity. I made full size chairs 
um, yeah, don't tell anybody, but I've got this huge collection, uh, collections, collections and designers. And, um, yeah, the, 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 look what a lot of us have them. But one of my collections is uh, knitted teddy bears. But I, um, yeah, made this huge knitted bear um, as uh, and a badly knitted, as you can see, that's my that's me I'm badly knitting stuff. Um, um, big chair. I combine chairs together as well. So just, yeah, again, uh, prowling uh, skips. Two chairs together for me becomes a relationship about two people. Those keys I mentioned earlier, um, I've got a big collection. I've got buckets full of these uh, keys. And um, I have a chair I found in skip with those broken leather at the bottom, a bucket with keys in. And then this this glistening, um, strong backed phallic man that comes from it. The key, he has, yeah, obvious, but like keys to the door, but he's rigid and stuck and rusting. So from moquettes to models to um, um, yeah, just the, those mixes of different scales. I would advise you in your spaces, in your um, creative spaces, to just start making things. Um, yeah, I preach about drawing, but making as well and playing and trying things out. A ladder for me is about aspiration a ladder for me is about getting somewhere but this is going nowhere this old ladder because it's stuck with this chair um it's an empty aspiration this um broken chair um with its feeble legs um and it's balloon and stuck with sort of diy gaffer tape um, again, uh, for me, examines a, a notion of masculinity. This diminutive chair and its older sibling, um, they, they, they look a bit lost. They look a bit fragile together. I'm coming to the end of um, what I was talking about because we've got to finish in about five minutes. But yeah, so yeah, um, combinations of things that become bigger things. This is my grandfather's um, walking stick as a chair and, and it's got his, I don't know if I can get a bit closer to this. No, I can't. Um, his name is scratched in the top, top of it. Um, it's... Um, yeah, it's, it, it's a, a reminder of his life and a, a void uh, when he, he died. Um, but yeah, for me, and his uh, masculinity, his notion of masculinity. And this obsession is, yeah, just one of my obsessions. I think we're obsessive a lot in some ways. Um, is, um, yeah, um, the, yeah, carries on. And I also take photographs. I don't know if, like you, I, I see people dump chairs and leave them about. And for me, the dump chairs become a story of something uh, rejected, uh, lost. Um, I think of the life of the chair before. Of, look at that. Um, it's broken. It's, it, it's washed out, but rem it, its life before was romantic and funny and bright. And look how broken that chair is now. This chair for me has a different life. It's a, um, yeah, someone slung it in that corner. It's, um, it's plasticky, it's uh, a bit brash, it's uh, cheap. But it had a life and an importance and it was dumped. I could show you lots, but I won't because we're just about to finish. Um, 
Yeah, and all sorts of chairs from wheelchairs to uh, car seats to toilets to um, I think have a resonance for me in my crazed mind um, and a power um, and th uh, they keep on giving. Um, look at that. Um, that for me, there's a child, you know, th that chi childhood's over. Um, look at those bins overflowing with rubbish. Um, but that chair is there talking about that girl, I think probably a girl, um, her life, um, as she grows up. Um, yeah. Um, and just finally, I'm going to show you this image. Um, and, and yeah, so, so my illustration work that I talked about earlier and the stuff that I've been doing with all these books and things, um, I think the two can, uh, the, 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 the object work and the illustration work can collide and do do so sometimes. So he, he was a, a book cover that I did. Um, and yeah, the, the series, the actually really lovely uh, ser series of um, short stories by Dennis Johnson. Um, and this is uh, the sea made out of um, uh, pencil shavings. Um, I, I got blisters on my hands making this cover for Penguin. Um, but hopefully this brings together uh, uh, lots of different stories, lots of different uh, uh, creativity. It's about creative expression and is also this sea of expression as well. And that's where um, um, yeah, uh, those can collide through objects. I have been through this really, really quickly. Um, I, I hope that was interesting. Um, and yeah, it's just a short introduction to objects and ideas. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jake, for wonderful, insightful, I mean, uh, images, and they were quite powerful also, what I think, because they were more than the function, more than uh, there were layers and layers of meanings, you know, behind every image you show. So I'm sure it is very beneficial for all the audience, including myself. So I am a furniture designer myself, and I'm always looking at chair, you know, and trying to find out what else I can do with a chair, because sometimes you are stuck in functionality, sometimes you are stuck in comfort, ergonomics. And, uh, you know, in sometimes industry expectations are uh, quite different from, you know, uh, uh, when you really want to go uh, artistic about it. But I'm happy to see the kind of work you're trying to do where the artistic expression is quite prominent, you know, and uh, uh, one does feel that the chair is power. I sometimes look at a chair and think that it's hierarchy. You know, it's something uh, com what it is communicating is beyond what is actually visible in the chair. So I'm uh, very happy to see the images. Um, you just it's so a questions, dangerous uh, obsession that I have because, yeah, the more chairs I make and get, yeah, my my studio gets fuller and fuller with them. <laughs> uh, so I, I have a question uh, for you. Uh, basically, uh, yeah, how do you like you? I, I know you're an illustrator, so you have been spending a lot of time in 2D thinking. Uh, on the other side, I do teach 3D thinking to students, you know, so uh, for you, how do you uh, transit, you know, between a 2D space to a 3D space or do you think it's only a singular uh, singularity and it's nothing to do with 2D or 3D? How do you do the switch? I think it, it, it's a refreshing switch for me and I think it's a, it's a good, um, for the students here, I think it's just, it, it makes you think in a very, very different way. Uh, manner and uh, yeah, I, I, I think in tandem that it, it, it's really healthy for me personally. Um, firstly, I'd just like to say it was such an incredible presentation, absolutely fascinating images, and again, extremely powerful as well. I think I'd just like to go off of what Pankaj sir just said uh, to ask. For a comparison from you about both the mediums that you work in. So is it something that's just for you a refreshing process as a relaxation or a break from a certain medium? Or is it something that you felt 
that was missing in either that you try to cover up in the other? I think it's one of our philosophies here at Kingston, and I, I really buy into this, is that the um, I, I think a lot of people get too obsessed with a single methodology and actually when it works and it doesn't always work, we, we, we um, really want our students to what happens if a fashion designer starts cutting stone or a, a, um, a, a, a an architect starts using fashion knitting machines? Something really interesting can happen because they come at it from a different direction. I also think, and I want to repeat this, that, that, that there are yeah, those silos. You are a an architect. And so you can only do that. You are an interior designer side or whatever you are. Um, you can only do that. It's much more exciting to, uh, you know, just say, well, no, I'm a thinker or, um, yeah, uh, to, to say, well, I'll play in lots of different ways. And, yeah, I think some of the most exciting artists or designers that I know are not uh, it, it, within one furrow. They'll, they'll move throughout uh, to different areas. Um, I did my my students do exceptional things and uh, 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 the they'll suddenly make animation out of ceramics or and I think wow <laughs> you know it's just yeah playing and um yeah I think play is a really important thing and I think this is what Shaz was talking about last week I think it, it is is about allowing yourself that uh, uh um he was talking about almost like a relaxation I, I I'm not so sure about that word but, but um you know it actually just that space to to play and to create not a very good answer to your question sorry <laughs> that is def definitely an interesting outlook because i think um a lot of times we try to find a pinpointed answer but it's really a lot easier to let ourselves be open to opportunities and to experiences and exploring different mediums for sure great um hi sir um, I think that was an incredible aspect onto looking into different uh, variety of designers as well as, you know, showcasing their work that I think we've been uh, every day. We're like trying to understand and look at an approach of design from various aspects and various perspectives and then put our own perspective into it. So I think one of the uh, very um, something that intrigued me was the dress, the dress that was uh, cut in the you know with the aspects and like cutting of the vase and mm -hmm. I mean your intake onto it and how you said that either you could be you know it could mean like something good because vows are something that are promising each other but also something that maybe could act as a prison so your intake onto both those uh, you know aspects were very, was very interesting um, but also there's one aspect that I would want to reflect upon and ask you on is that um, so when you deal with chairs and you know you make like interesting um, things out of all those chairs and also make it uh, you built a connection with masculinity in those uh, with the chairs. So I want to ask that in the field that we are in as designers, not just in the respective fields, but also as a outlook of how we are all designers. Um, how do you really and and we all generally follow a very procedural approach onto you know how to go about the final outcome or the final output mm -hmm. and um, we mostly um, follow that approach of you know uh, if uh, the client wants something so we are very client oriented at the end of the day mm -hmm. so how do you really break through from that aspect and you know work and play with your uh, hand and like go about that entire technical ability and is it like something that you make it a conscious effort to break through and like make those outcomes or is it something that so how do you really go about the procedure because this is something that has its own journey and procedure mm -hmm. but uh, again it's something that is not so structured it's something that gives you freedom on to really putting your thought out there so how do you really go about it and how do you really like you know build a connection or even a point of differentiation between the two I, th I think again, a really good question. And um, yeah, um, Pankaj has um, 
point about ergonomics or um yeah yeah that doesn't bother me <laughs> and I, 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 you know because they, these are not um they're not pieces that will go within a client realm in that sense yes. um these are more uh, yeah doing something as statements as questions um actually i really like working within the confines of a brief but also the confines of a brief sometimes need turning upside down so a client comes to you and says look we need an interior design for this or we need a bit of furniture that and i think us as creative people we have to not always easy but we have to well, actually i think your brief is wrong or the, the question is different um and yeah, so so I think we have to think sometimes beyond the client or sometimes it takes a lot of convincing to actually say, well, yeah, but, but you know, wouldn't it be good if actually what you don't need is another interior? What, 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 well, let's approach it with, with something else. Um, yeah, actually, I've, I've, I've always worked to client briefs and uh, in my small field of editorial illustration things, it's you've got this shape. Um, you've got this br uh, bit of text that's come through and we need some ideas almost immediately. And, and I have to perform and I have to get it to, to them in a couple of hours. Um, and it, it's hopefully there's a lovely idea there if, I, if it, it, sometimes not. Um, but yeah, so, so I conform to the brief, a a absolutely. But I think as a creative creature, I think you should have some areas in your life where you can just do some and I think this is what I was showing there it, it meandering elsewhere into your own uh yeah to pushing and I think yeah getting out uh getting out of the client brief and just having speculative work can be very very healthy for when you actually come back to the uh, uh, the client brief thank you Jake, may I may I come in with a question? Of course. Yeah, uh, you know, I obviously this is really fascinating and uh, all of that. And I both as a professional practitioner or as an educator have always been very fascinated with this line between design and art. And mm -hmm. where do you draw the line? Is there a line? Is it a blurred line? Is it not a line? you know uh, and uh, uh, and i think it also links somewhere to what muskan just uh, picked on you know uh, i also see you know newer discipline and then it came into visual uh, or you know went into communication design and now user experience and all of that and we are becoming so and so the 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 industry practice is becoming data driven, uh, predictability of outcomes, predictability of results and so on and so forth, all of that. And there is immense pressure on institutions and educators to prepare students for this future because they're going to go into the industry and they have to perform in the industry. And I feel somewhere in trying to balance that pressure or that expectation you know from various stakeholders are we as educators sometimes undermining the the value of the kind of expressions that you just shared with us and building this this as a as a experience for our students because when you do you know what what you just spoke about you were speaking about visual language the language of objects there was lateral thinking that was part of it the the line between you know the the way a designer's processes or the so-called I may, I may or may not agree to this i'm not i'm just putting it out there because that's something that people uh, generally talk about you know the artist's process the designer's process what do you think is the value of bringing uh, an input like this or a or an experience a project like this for students in today's time um, uh, you know when when there is the pressure of preparing them for a, for an industry that is 
relying more and more on uh, data driven approaches evidence informed approaches predictability of outcomes uh, and so on and so forth and not just jake i mean i'm i'm happy for pankaj and other educators in this group to you know sort of uh, contribute to this uh, this idea jake um, I think, yeah, your line is very, it has got to be very, uh, it, by its nature, is very wiggly between art and design. And But I think that, yeah, we're, we're, you're talking about professionalism and getting a job, and it, these are essential, of course. Um, but at its essence, I think the education space and the, the individual should be rebellious um and i think there is so much bland design that is led by um the wrong reasons and i think in an education space again i, I yeah we, we should be messing things up and trying stuff and pushing it in, in lots of different uh, uh directions and again um as Shaz talked about this last week um and uh, um about making mistakes um actually we talk a lot about just you know actually um really learning from mistakes and playing and um sitting in f uh, learning ai um sitting uh, you know really important learn the program programs for animation absolutely brilliant fantastic but it doesn't make human it doesn't make a, a an idea um and so yeah you have to have as a counterpoint to those things you have to have um new ways of working new ways of trying things um and a good design school and iad kingston school of art yeah that that, that i think is at its essence Uh, um, Tony's um, put a, um, a question forward. Yeah, I'm just, I, I'm just. Re although they're on sustainable fashion business and practices, have been engaged in making sculptures, doing photography, and really responding to the questions. Actually, and I was, I was with the. Um, fashion promotion students yesterday, the final year, who so were doing their major projects. And again, that, that idea that the predictability that you were talking about, Pratchy, earlier on, uh, of the process being defined by algorithms just gives, as Jake says, a really bland way of working. It's retrospective. It doesn't allow for you to think forward. And, and to be honest, within educational sectors as well, we do the same. So if you go to marketing and say, we want a new course, and you go, well, there's no demand for it because they're looking at previous data. So how do you push forward with something that's really new and original? You have to do it slightly surreptitiously through, through a, a, a approaching a new curriculum method, which is what we've been doing. And, and I think it's for, for all the students as well, as I was talking to students yesterday, it, it's about under, having an idea, actually, and, and everything else are just tools. And that's what I really liked about what Jake's doing, because we're also doing, I'll, get, I'll talk to you about this later, the, the <laughs> cultural diversity week that we're doing this year is about masculinity. And, and, I, and, and I thought, we, so we'll have a conversation about that. And, and I think that, the, so it's just all about the ideas. And it doesn't matter where the ideas are coming from, really. And it's more about looking at other things. So I to say to the fashion students, don't look at fashion, <laughs> look at something else, you know, and, and then you'll perhaps come up with something like Jake looking at, at, at chairs and, and, and particularly those, the artists he was showing, which again, I really like a lot of those as well. And I, I use them as reference as well uh, um, to, to the students. And they often say, well, you, you come in at this from quite a fine art background. I said, well, I'm a designer, I'm not a fine artist, I'm a designer. But because a lot of that is just looking at things from a different perspective. And I find that really inspirational like that, with Jake's talk today. So I suppose that's my take on what all this is about, if that's useful to anyone. Yes. Yeah, Shaz, Shaz. please. 
Yeah, hi Jake. That was that was fabulous. Your your the kind of work that you shared with us. Uh, so I really appreciate the political stuff that you shared, and of course the chairs and 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 the kind of nuances that they had. My question, I have a question. Yeah, my question is, uh, how do you how do you maneuver with individuality and the collective? You know, the society that we live in, the times that we live in, that we are situated in. Uh, how does that and you as a designer, artist, and a guy who expresses himself, uh, how, how do you maneuver that? And uh, part two, uh, how do you inculcate or impart that in your students as an academic process? Um, yeah, um, yeah, it's, it's a good one. Um, the a lot of what I, I, I do really is me musing in my studio and and that is not collective in it i suppose it's commentary on the collective but it, it it's quite a there's quite insular in their way and and, and quite um you know one side of me um and uh, um so yeah, I, I'm commenting, hopefully, uh, and, and raising these uh, issues with my audience. And um, the singular uh, voice um, that I have is, is just one view. Um, but we do like our, our students to have a a single voice as well. Actually, we love collaboration. Our students in fashion, in interior design, whatever, um, are working on collaborative briefs all the time. But they, are, yeah, we they bring individual voices and um, uh, uh, to that relationship um, and debate. And uh, I, I think, yeah, you're right about inculcation. And is what I'm doing didactic. Uh, I think it's just a viewpoint, actually. Um, um, yeah, uh, and like IAAD, I think we, yeah we have strategies that we'll get a, a, a group of people together to f find uh, ideas together, and then really nurture this sort of personal viewpoint in the in their work as well. Not a very good answer to. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> No, no, good answer, good answer, good answer. At least part one was very nice because that you're you're saying you're commenting on on the collective as an individual, you know, as an insular space. You're commenting on the yeah. I mean, that's that's fabulous. We look forward to seeing you sometime, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, I'm, 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 yeah. Next time I'm in India, I, I, I've only been to IAD once, and I was impressed. Um, yeah, I, but I, yeah, I'd love to come back. Yeah, and and uh, actually, this you know, and our students that are here today wouldn't be great if we're doing more stuff together. And actually, Jamboree was uh, at its inception thought about is just to bring you know, different people together uh, in our sister institutions that have so much, so many similar uh, aspirations and ethos. Yeah, uh, and on that note, so I see Muskan's hand raised. Muskan, please go ahead. Yes, I think that's a problem with my video. Um, either way, uh, there's a there's something that was highlighted con continuously. This one term called masculinity. So um, I I don't know. I I feel like in the world that we are in, we have like uh, various point of views and perspectives on that one particular term. But um, from where you're coming from, I really want to know that what intake do you have on that term and how do you really refer to it as some? I, I lost the end yeah, of that. I think she, um, she's just dropped out, but I think right. her question is still very much there that what mm -hmm. is your intake on the term masculinity itself? And I think in, in, a, in times when gender identities are ah, that's muskan is back muskan <laughs> yes my video is not working again yeah. but the way um so yes how do you usually go about that one particular term because um in the world that we live in i think people or even uh, you know in the past people have referred to that one particular term to be something very strong but how do you usually have uh, you know what what you what do you have to say about it and how do you inculcate 
dedicate that one particular term onto the work that you portray? Um, it, it's always been a, a, an interest to me because I think it is a, a, a masculinity is, is a notion. It's a social construct. Um, and I think gender is, is so important and so prejudicial in our cultures, um, across our cultures. Um, and it, it's I think it's just really fascinating as well. It's always fascinated me, you know, about, you know, you're a woman, then do you you think in this way or walk in this way or um, dress in this way? Uh, you're a man, you uh, work in this way. Um, interestingly, I think there's so much done on femininity and women's roles, but a lot less um, on um, how const constructs of ma masculinity come about. And that fascinates me as well. And how men are stereotyped, how the pressures on men uh, to, to uh, fall into particular roles. Um, so yeah, it, it's, a, it's a personal uh, obsession and an interest um, and, uh, yeah, it's been with me, and yeah, just approaching it from different angles, and sometimes with a satirist's eye. Sometimes, yeah, I, I think. No, I won't. But yeah, yeah, I've done a lot of theoretical work on it. But I won't bore you at the moment. But um, yeah, it, it, it's it's a fascinating construct of how yeah men should be um uh, how women should be um and a bit daft as well all right yeah. sia go ahead just a quick follow-up to the previous question i just wanted to ask if your understanding or your expression of masculinity has changed through your sculptural exploration of it as a concept would you say that how you thought of it has been reinforced to you, or do you think that has completely changed or your views have been flipped in a way? I think, yeah, any such investigation, uh, yeah, gets you thinking more about it. Um, yeah, I, uh, yeah, imposing my views about it, but then thinking, yeah, well, are people thinking in the same way? And yeah, I, I started uh, cutting up chairs and then trying to stick them back together. And, uh, you know, in, in a really, you know, actually, the, 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 it looked like a bomb site at the end. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think that, yeah, just that discussion with yourself as you're sticking a chair back together, yeah, you're, you're bound to be um, thinking about the, the, what it actually communicates. And um, yeah. Yeah, so Jake, uh, I think Damien was asking about, was telling us about conversation with the materials. I'm sure uh, you are you are continuously involved with that kind of communication uh, or conversation with the materials. So uh, again, the question is, when you deal uh, with these kind of projects, like you showed as a project in where the students are taking up a shoe and trying to integrate or juxtapose with other materials, you know, and trying to find out a more deeper meaning, right? So how much time in terms of, you know, in a curriculum you plan for having the dialogue with the material or the found objects versus the execution, for example? Um, yeah, I think probably like you, we have so much to do with the students, not enough time ever. Um, but I, I think actually playing materials and finding out what materials mean and can do. I, um, in my own personal work, I, I try to make chairs out of balloons. And you know, trying to tie balloons into chairs and this stupid, childish, futile medium, <laughs> um, and it kept falling over, and certainly you couldn't sit on it. But uh, yeah, you know, it, it was fascinating for for me to try and do to do it, and it's the implication of a material. I made chairs out of lead. And so they, yeah, cutting lead's quite easy, but you know, it's poisonous and it's heavy and it flops and soft in its way as well. But yeah, it, it, for me that then that's absolutely becomes about meaning and about back to that masculinity thing about this heavy, strong, but pliable and poisonous. And yeah, so, so they come together. Me. 
Wonderful. Um, I'm also mindful of the time and I think we can just go on uh, in this conversation. And uh, but um, I'm going to hand this back to uh, Dia and Chandrika uh, for closing today. And uh, but before I hand, hand it back to them, I just wanted to take a minute to very quickly thank everybody uh, who's been part of Jimbori sometimes uh, in front of the camera, sometimes behind the camera, sometimes just is as as uh, a listener. Uh, but I think um, it's a small step uh, that uh, we have taken towards like what Jake and Damien have said into growing this uh, partnership between the two sister institutions. So just thank you, everybody. And um, uh, we, we look forward to growing this further. So back to you, Dia and Chandrika. And uh, thank you, Jake. Pleasure. Uh, well, this was one of the most interesting and knowledgeable conversation and we can just keep going on. It was really intriguing discussion that we had here today and I hope that we can keep this conversation going on beyond this event. So keep experimenting and conversing. Also, I would like to thank Dr. Jake for his inspiring talk and all the conversers, Mr. Pankaj Narayan, Sia Suri, and Ms. Khan Suri for contributing your thoughts. For the leadership and at KSA and IIED, including Damien Chapman, head of design school KSA, Dr. James Abraham, Jake Abrams, international officer KSA, Dr. Jitin Chadda, founder and CEO of IIED, Usha Nehru Patel, director of academics IIED Delhi, for their guidance and support in making Jim Bodhi possible.